Uh, I'm Kazunari Shibata from uh, Astronomical Observatory. Previous name is Kuasan and Hida Observatories of Kyoto University. And uh, I'm going to uh, organize this uh, morning session. And uh, uh, title of the session is uh, Astrobiology, uh, my relation between space, universe, and uh, life. And uh, there are three keynote talks. Uh, first talk uh, will be given by myself. The title is Solar and Stellar Flares and Their Impacts on Planets and Life. Okay, uh, let's start with my talk. Uh, first flare, solar flare, that human beings observed in history uh, was by Richard Carrington in England, and also uh, by uh, Hodgson in England. This is a very famous sketch uh, by Carrington, uh, large sunspot. And you can see uh, white patches. Uh, this is now called white light flare uh, because uh, uh, we can see this by visible light, white light. And uh, this white light flare is a very rare associated with a very big flare. So uh, uh, Carrington was very lucky to observe this one. And he was very surprised to find this uh, uh, very short uh, explosive event. And uh, uh, this continued only for five minutes. Uh, but next morning, very bright aurora appeared all over the world, uh, such as uh, Cuba, Bahamas, Jamaica, El Salvador, and Hawaii. Of course, you know, all is uh, usually observed in the northern uh, countries. But this time, very southern places, all was observed. And actually, this was the largest magnetic storm in recent 200 years. And uh, uh, by checking the old literature, we now found that uh, at this stage, telegraph system already started. Uh, but that system all over Europe and North America failed. Telegraph pylons threw sparks and the telegraph paper spontaneously caught fire. So some economic disaster occurred. And very recently, in 1989, March, very ma large magnetic storm occurred. And uh, uh, Aurora, very beautiful aura appeared. This led to a Quebec blackout. This is a Quebec state in Canada. And uh, six million people uh, could not use electricity for nine hours. And uh, uh, this uh, magnetic storm, it's a 540 nanotesla disturbance. And associated with big flare, but uh, this is not a very extreme big flare. This can occur three years later or so. And uh, uh, the reason of this uh, uh, trouble was uh, uh, transformer trouble. Because of a uh, magnetic storm, strong electric current flow in the ionosphere, which induces electric current on all electric system. That uh, uh, caused trouble in the transformer and the other electric instruments. This is a... Uh, Aurora, same from space, you know, very bright region is Aurora, Quebec, even at Florida, Aurora was observed. And uh, such an Aurora region often had a trouble in history. And a very big question we have, will the Carrington class flare occur again? If the Carrington class flare occur now, what will happen? And recent paper estimates potential damage to 900 plus satellites currently in orbit could cost between $30 billion and $70 billion. So a uh, huge disaster on our modern civilization. So question, why do solar flares produce magnetic storm in, on the Earth? What is a solar flare? Will our sun produce super flares which are much more energetic than the largest flare we observed before? 
Well, this is a, a question I will discuss in, in my talk. So uh, my, this is the plan of my talk. So let's see what is solar flares. This is a very big solar flares observed at HIDA Observatory of Kyoto University and uh, observed in H alpha uh, spectrum, right? And you see this, this black circle is a sunspot uh, magnet, a kind of magnet. And you see a bright patches uh, propagate. This is a solar flare. And the actual uh, time scale is uh, more than one hour, but uh, now shortened in a few seconds. So you can see the change of uh, bright region very well. And uh, uh, as I said, the, uh, the source of energy is magnetic energy uh, stored around the sunspot. Now, we, we know this uh, physics already, but the uh, exact mechanism is still uh, not yet uh, completely uh, solved. And uh, uh, total energy release is uh, this number, uh, but maybe difficult to understand for you. Uh, 10 to the 32 erg is uh, roughly 100 million hydrogen bomb energy. And uh, uh, often solar prominence eruption occurred in association with solar flares. This is the biggest prominence eruption in the history of the in US uh, more than 70 years ago. You see, uh, this is a solar rim. So this uh, prominence is how large? And the speed is uh, 300 kilometers per second. So uh, we can go to Tokyo in two seconds <laughs> with this speed. And uh, uh, now uh, the physics of solar flares has been uh, studied well. This is a famous X-ray uh, movie of the sun uh, taken by Japanese uh, satellite Yoko. Uh, Japanese, US, and European collaboration. Uh, this is uh, through uh, nature of the solar corona. Solar corona is uh, uh, sometimes observed that total eclipse. And the temperature is uh, more than one million Kelvin. And uh, uh, but this uh, movie, you you can see that the solar corona is full of uh, uh, flares, explosion, all brightening flares. And also you can see sometimes uh, mass ejection cut from bright region flares. That is a kind of prominence eruption and finally become solar wind. So uh, I was very surprised, shocked to see this uh, movie when I joined this uh, research group. And this is X-ray, so very dangerous to our body. But of course we are uh, safe because uh, our atmosphere absorbs X-rays and a high atmosphere. But if we go to space, we will receive such uh, X-rays, strong X-rays and other radiation particles. So very dangerous. And uh, also, this is the American and European uh, artificial satellite uh, of the, the artificial eclipse of the sun in space. So this is a circle of the sun. This is a uh, me metal circle. You, you see corona, also stars. And uh, immediately we uh, can find that uh, corona is flowing out. This is a solar wind. And sometimes uh, gigantic mass ejection occurs. This is a uh, uh, result of a prominence eruption uh, and called the coronal mass ejection. So uh, uh, we usually we don't uh, know such a very active uh, solar uh, situation, but uh, such solar wind and the coronal mass ejection sometimes impact the Earth. So uh, if uh, such a huge uh, mass ejection directly collide with the Earth, what would happen? 
This is a, uh, actually, a story in Japanese newspaper. Uh, 16 years ago, very big flare occurred near the center of the sun, and a mass ejection collided uh, with the Earth. So, produced a lot of tr troubles in our uh, society, uh, modern civilization, such as uh, uh, trouble of uh, artificial satellite, trouble on the sea, uh, ship, electricity blackout, radio communication trouble, aurora, and finally, newspaper uh, describes even the airline passengers receive radiation dots, a bit dangerous. Why uh, aurora and magnetic storm occurred as a result of solar flares and coronal mass ejection? This was made by NASA uh, animation. When so big solar flares occurs, uh, huge mass ejection occurs, coronal mass ejection, and reach the Earth two or three days later. And once geomagnetic field uh, stops, but finally uh, energy can enter to the no North Pole, around North Pole and South Pole. This is the aurora. So this is the way how magnetic storm and aurora occur. And uh, now uh, uh, international solar observation is uh, very developed. This is the stereo observation of the sun and the earth. So uh, solar disturbance, blast wave, can now be directly observed. So we can see how the Earth is in a danger, dangerous situation. And from these kind of data, now uh, uh, we should uh, develop a space with a prediction. Uh, prediction of a space storm as a result of solar flares and solar wind. This is an urgent issue in, in all over the world. Okay, so uh, from now, uh, I'll show you one entertainment on the uh, solar flares and mass ejection uh, using the uh, Kitaro san, famous musician, Grammy Award winner. Uh, his uh, sound simultaneously. And uh, please enjoy nice music and uh, uh, solar movies. You can understand uh, how a sun is active. And, uh, if you want to see this movie again, you can buy this one on Amazon. <laughs> so uh, this is a collaboration between Kitaro-san and myself. And uh, uh, you can buy both the English version or a uh, Japanese version. <laughs> okay. Uh, ma, as you see, the sun affects the earth in many different ways. and. Uh, uh, summarizing, uh, solar flare produce X-rays, strong X-rays and ultraviolet. This reach the Earth in eight minutes. And then energetic particles uh, uh, come to uh, the Earth in shortest time, 10 minutes to uh, two days. And finally, solar wind disturbances uh, come to the Earth as a result of prominence eruption, coronal mass ejections. And uh, these uh, produce a lot of trouble, as we discussed. And uh, now uh, we need a space with a prediction, and this is the center of the space with a prediction in the United States, NOAA. And I visited this place 10 years ago, and then uh, found an interesting uh, presentation. Uh, you see, how space weather affects you? Many electric instruments are uh, damaged. But uh, you can see this strange one. What this? This is a Den Shabato and carrier pigeon. <laughs> and uh, why uh, carrier pigeon is affected? Because a uh, carrier pigeon uh, can travel over uh, 1,000 kilometers because they can detect the geomagnetic field. But uh, when the solar flare occurs, geomagnetic storm, occurs, magnetic field, uh, some uh, change, then a uh, pigeon uh, cannot go to the right way. 
and uh, uh, so uh, this this kind of business uh, is affected by solar flare very much. So I, I heard uh, American group of this carrier pigeon always checking solar flares. <laughs> then uh, in 2008, in IAU regional meeting in China, I heard a very interesting, strange talk by Russian researchers. He uh, described when solar flares occurred, traffic accidents occurred more frequently, and patients' health in the hospitals became worse. And uh, he uh, proposed heliobiology, <laughs> new research subject. And I was very surprised. I, at, at this time, I was uh, doing a cha chairman. And then I immediately asked him why. And he said, uh, flare occurs, geomagnetic storm occurs. Then such a magnetic disturbance affects the blood because hemoglobin in blood has an ion that is affected by a magnetic field. And then blood pressure may change. So uh, uh, t traffic, uh, 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 people uh, cannot control car and also uh, patient in hospital uh, blood pressure change. So worse for health. Then amazingly, one month later, again in other IAU symposium, one uh, Bulgarian researchers uh, showed this uh, uh, interesting graph, the uh, relation between blood pressure and the geomagnetic storm strength and some positive correlation. And uh, again, I was very surprised. And returning to Japan, I happened to meet uh, Dr. Tsutomu Nishimura and Professor Fukushima in Kyoto University Hospital. And they have been studying the effect of magnetic field on life. And uh, today, fortunately, Dr. Nishimura attending this symposium, and he will give a talk uh, next to my talk. Then I will, I'd like to discuss uh, final question. Will our sun produce super flares, which are much more energetic than the largest solar flare we observed before? Uh, this is a, a well-known statistics of occurrence frequency of solar flares, micro flares, nano flares, small flares. And uh, our observation showed that uh, uh, frequency of flares decrease with increasing energy of solar flares. Uh, when the energy becomes 10 times, the frequency becomes less uh, to one tenth. Interestingly, this is uh, very similar to the statistics of earthquake, very similar. And this is the largest solar flare, uh, Carrington flare, uh, in the history. So question is uh, whether this uh, uh, curve continues and even much bigger solar super flare occur uh, even though the frequency is less. So uh, even frequency is small, if this happened, this would affect the Earth, our society, uh, very extreme. So very big disaster occurred all over the world. All electric system may, may have been broken, so on. So uh, uh, we started uh, this kind of subject. And uh, uh, as you know, the Earth history is even longer. Uh, so, uh, during such a longer time, super flare, solar super flare may have affected the life, evolution of life in the past. And uh, uh, we know uh, dinosaurs ex extinct. Uh, uh, 6, <laughs> uh, 0 0.65 uh, million years ago. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, 
there, there is evidence that a big uh, major impact that is a, a cause of uh, extinction of dinosaurs. But the different uh, uh, possibility may be present. I started to discuss. Then uh, my uh, friend, archaeobiologist, showed me this graph. Uh, life already uh, experienced five mass extinction in a, a five, 540 mega year period. And the last one is a dinosaur extinction. So uh, there's evidence of a meter, big meter impact. But uh, uh, we don't know the reason of the previous uh, four times mass extinction. And a very big super flare may uh, be the reason of this uh, extinction. And if so, uh, uh, solar super flares may affect the evolution of life very much. And uh, also recently, uh, astronomy discovered many exoplanets. And we are very interested in the life in such, on such exoplanet. But uh, evolution of life on exoplanet uh, may be affected this kind of one. So, uh, uh, so super flares is important in astrobiology subject. Anyway, we started to think about this one. Then we found that from X-ray astronomy observations, young stars show super flares with one million times more energetic than the larger solar flares. So uh, uh, our uh, sun also extremely active when that was born in uh, 4.6 billion years ago. Uh, but uh, uh, our sun is not young, already 4.6 billion years old. And uh, important uh, uh, point is that the sun is slowly rotating. Uh, astronomical observation already showed that slowly rotating stars are very quiet. So uh, uh, we discussed a bit uh, scary uh, subject, but uh, please feel relieved. I discussed until 2011, 12. Amazing discovery was made in 2012 by Mahera et al. Uh, you remember statistics of solar flares. Uh, frequency of super flares with energy 1,000 times larger than the largest solar flares might occur in uh, 10,000 years. So in order to uh, quantitatively establish this one, we need uh, 10,000 years of observation. But of course, you know that uh, our telescopic observation is only 400 years after Galileo. So uh, how can we observe the sun for 10,000 years? Uh, astron astronomer knows that there are many stars similar to the sun, called solar type stars. So uh, if we observe 10,000 solar type stars similar to our sun for one year, we can get the data similar to the data obtained from 10,000 years of observation of the sun. So uh, we started to think about this kind of analysis. And uh, Professor Sekiuchi in Tokyo kindly uh, told me that uh, Kepler satellite uh, launched by NASA, this is an exoplanet hunting space telescope. This is a, has established a very great discovery. A lot of exoplanets, more than 4,000 planets. And uh, uh, you know that recently Professor Mayor received Nobel Prize in relation to this. And uh, uh, this telescope, space telescope, was observing near the Milky Way here, uh, over 150,000 stars. Uh, roughly half are the solar type stars. And 30 minute time cadence data is open to public. So uh, we can use this one, this data, uh, that, that telescope uh, detects uh, stellar brightness uh, change in very high accuracy. 
And、uh, we searched for super flares on solar type stars using Kepler satellite,、uh, 83,000 solar type stars.、Uh, if super flare occurs, as you remember, Carrington flare can be seen in the visible light.、Uh, this is a visible light observation. So,、uh, super flare can be detected.、Uh, since the data are so large, we asked the first year undergraduate students to help analyze these stars because students have a lot of free time. <laughs> And uh, then uh, these five students joined our group. Here, I, I should mention this important point. Uh, previously, normal astronomers didn't believe、uh, the sun, similar,、uh, the stars similar to the sun,、uh, do not produce super flares because they、uh, are old and、uh, slowly rotating. And、uh, so, no one has seriously studied this possibility. But、uh, these students didn't know astronomy, so, completely free from. <laughs> Such a previous knowledge. <laughs> Therefore, I encourage them if you di discover this is a great research, then、uh, they start seriously、uh, search for, and surprisingly, they found 365 super flares on 148 solar type stars. And finally, paper appeared in Nature 2012, including these、uh, undergraduate students. Okay,、uh, this is a typical example of a super flare.、Uh, vertical axis is the brightness of a star and the flare in unit of a average brightness of a star. Horizontal axis is the time in unit of the day, roughly、uh, one month. And you can see that、uh, stellar brightness itself shows a 1% change. And、uh, this spike. Uh, super flares. So,、uh, super flare can be seen in visible light, 1.5% brighter than average. The total energy is estimated 10 to the 35 erg. This is roughly 1,000 times、uh, bigger than the largest solar flare. This is the other、uh, super flare.、Uh, This is a very big super flare. Total energy is 10 to the 36 or 10,000 times bigger than the largest solar flare. So, and interestingly,、uh, these super flare stars show stellar brightness variation itself. Very interesting. All、uh, super flare stars show such a、uh, brightness variation. Why?、Uh, we Uh, hypothesize it is likely due to the rotation of a star with a big star spot.、Uh, this is a calculation by undergrad students. If such big spot is present on stars、uh, with a rotation, stellar brightness becomes like this. When spot is backside, the star becomes、uh, most bright. But、uh, when spot is uh, here, uh, stellar brightness decreases. And、uh, this is a very simple model, but uh, uh, amazingly、uh, can explain observed brightness variation. This is not a proof, but、uh, ma shows the possibility of this、uh, mechanism. Okay, so、uh, this is、uh, our hypothetical、uh, image of a super flare. Solar type stars.、Uh, this、uh, white region, bright region, is a white light flare, similar to Carrington flare, but much bigger. And the、uh, star spot itself is also very big. Then、uh, huge energy is stored and the super flare occurs. This is a big solar flare, real image. Observe that, Hida observatory. Okay, so. Maybe、uh, we, we should、uh, discuss frequency. This is the result of a、uh, uh, stellar 
スーパーフレアフリークエンシー。So interestingly, roughly this statistic is the continuation of solar flares. So uh, uh, super flares are 1000 times more energetic than the largest solar flare of car. Once in 5000 years.、Uh, in the case of 100 times、uh, frequency, the once in 500 years. So this frequency is not much different from a big earthquake frequency, such as a、uh, big earthquake occurred in eastern Japan 2011. So、uh, this is not、uh, 500 years later.、Uh, Problem, but uh, uh, modern, present problem we should know and prepare. And uh, uh, some researchers also searched for the evidence of super f l a t e on the sun. Dr. Miyake discovered uh, uh, evidence of a、uh, uh, cosmic ray increase roughly 1,000 years ago. Now, this is interpreted as a result of solar super flares. And、uh, on the other hand, Dr. Hayakawa in the、uh, Department of Literature、uh, found this kind of、uh, old evidence of、uh, aurora written in、uh, old literature.、Uh, this can be、uh, larger than the Carrington flare. Okay. So, summarizing my talk. Uh, large solar flares with energy、uh, 10 to the 31 to the 32 erg often produce disaster on Earth through geomagnetic storm and solar energetic particles. And、uh, radio communication trouble, global blackout, and even health problems of life and human. And using Kepler data, we found many super flares on solar type stars. That means.、Uh, Uh, possibility of solar super flares uh, in uh, this uh, frequency, and there is、uh, also recent evidence in tree ring and、uh, old literatures. Thank you very much.